geek side, uh, or, the, or the technical tech side a little more here, uh, and talk to you about some research that I'm doing in um, mobile ad hoc networks and distributed computation. So, okay, what is a mobile ad hoc network? I could, uh, I could easily give you some fancy pants computer science definition, um, but actually what I'm going to do instead is show you this uh, picture of DuPont Circle. Um, now what's happening in this picture in DuPont Circle, there's people who are uh, sitting down, um, they've probably got mobile phones in their pockets the same way everybody here does, there's people walking through DuPont Circle, maybe on their way to work, um, there's people driving around the circle, uh, going at a different speed than those people who are walking, so this is really what uh, comprises often a mobile ad hoc network. These devices in your pocket, uh, they're wanting to interact with one another um, in ad hoc ways, um, and the people who, who have them are, are mobile. So if you think about that from a uh, di digital perspective, um, then DuPont Circle might actually look something a little bit more like this. And uh, this is really neat. There's been research happening in mobile ad hoc networks for uh, quite some time, but the, the uh, increasing numbers of mobile devices in our world means that there's a huge number of applications um, that can be explored today that haven't been explored in the past. So one thing that, uh, that we're looking into doing is um, what we're calling distributed computation. And the idea is that you have this, this network and you can retrieve some information from that network that is not possible to retrieve from the capital I internet. So you can't just go and search for, say, uh, where is the nearest parking spot by putting that into Google. But if you are able to uh, submit that query to your local environment, then maybe what you can do is you can get information back on each device, aggregate it on its way back to you, and then give yourself um, some kind of probabilistic answer to that. So what uh, we're seeing here uh, is essentially that you have a source uh, of a query uh, on the top left. Uh, and that source uh, sends that query out to their neighbors. Uh, the neighbors will uh, receive that query, inspect the contents of it, and if it's relevant, uh, then, then they might act on it or, and or pass it on to their neighbors. Uh, this happens repeatedly uh, until uh, it is, the query is spread throughout the network, and then the information is sent back to, uh, to that, the source of that query, and um, it's aggregated along the way, and what happens at the end is that you can get something like, okay, is there a parking space available? Uh, the query comes back, you have a function that acts on that information and gives you some kind of recommendation uh, about maybe should you go left or right in order to find, to be more likely to find a parking space. So, okay, uh, why is this hard? Well, you can imagine a few reasons why this is hard. Um, one of them that I haven't talked about yet is the fact that uh, in most networks you have some kind of uh, fixed infrastructure, which will give you things like an IP address. So when you're at home, uh, you have a wireless network, and that wireless network gives you an IP address, lets you communicate with the outside uh, network. But in DuPont Circle, uh, if you haven't planned this ahead of time, then uh, you don't necessarily, you can't necessarily count on having that infrastructure. Uh, and so what you need to do is come up with routing protocols in order to uh, associate devices with one another and reliably communicate. And so, as I said, there's been lots of research done in this area. Um, the one that we're looking at is uh, something called local minima search. And local minima search uh, is really cool uh, because it uh, has two properties. One is that it doesn't make any assumptions about place infrastructure, and it also doesn't make any assumptions about how many, uh, or about who your neighbors are in that network. And so, uh, the way you uh, store information in a network running local minima search is that you take, uh, you give a hash, you give an ID to each node which is from some hash space. And, uh, and if you don't know what that is, then that's just a big long number um, that uh, everybody, everybody shares this function um, that, that has some large space. And then any piece of data that you want to store in that network, you would give a tag and you would also hash it into that space. And so the person who's trying to store this information then takes that data and that hash. So say um, I had um, a piece of data that was about a restaurant. And so that's when it gets tagged and I hash the word restaurant and the hash I get is the number seven. And so if I'm the source of that information, then I, I send that data out on what's called a random walk into the network. And then and it will be of some, some certain length. And at the end of that random walk, that piece of information looks around at all its neighbors and it says, okay, who has an ID that's closest to, uh, to set? Uh, and so whichever node that's in its local vicinity has that closest ID is where that information gets stored. 
And so what's neat about that is that it doesn't matter if those nodes are moving around, um, but all I have to know is that I'm looking for something that has to do with restaurant or events or parking. So uh, we're doing, um, essentially we're taking the work that was done with, with this protocol of minimum search and we're looking at what happens to it under mobility. So the, the earlier research that was done with this protocol uh, looked at static networks and so we're extending that um, in order to uh, then <laughs> go on and, and explore building these distributed computations so that you can have all kinds of uh, other interesting applications. Uh, some of you will recognize this picture. It's from Snowmageddon last year in the, uh, the big snowball fight that also happened in DuPont Circle. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really neat properties of, of these networks. Uh, for example, if you're at that snowball fight, it's a big crowd, it might be hard to find the friend that you showed up with, but if, you're, if you've got this uh, distributed computation capability, then maybe you know that your friend is, is over there behind all these people where you can't see them, um, and oh, they're moving north, and you can sort of catch up with them uh, if you vector this way. Um, there's, there's other um, kind of neat applications that you could imagine with this. For example, you could say, who within my uh, sort of 10 meter radius might be able to translate something from Farsi, uh, or help this sick person here who's a doctor. Um, uh, there's, a, there's another application that I was thinking of. Anyway, uh, there's a few examples I wanted to give, but um, the, the, the particularly neat thing about these networks is that, uh, again, you can't query for that kind of information, and it's not necessarily information that's static. So it's always going to be changing. The people that are part of that network are changing, but you can still build a picture, a comprehensive data picture of your local environment um, in order to uh, provide value to you. Um, so that's all. Thank you. I have references here. I can put this up online.